All right, y'all, what's going on? So, um, I'm just doing an update video because one of my followers was like, where's the video? <laughs> so, I was like, I just go do it now. But today is May 20th, and I'm currently 8 DPO. And what that means is that I'm eight days um, past my ovulation. So just give me, let me give you some backtrack. My dates, I remember showing you guys my calendar um, on my app. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why, but my ovulation date changed. It was supposed to be on Friday the 13th. And for some reason, it switched to the 12th. So uh, the donor was already supposed to come over um, on that Thursday the 12th and uh, the Friday the 13th for two inseminations. However, once I found out that my date changed, I basically was just like, hey, don't worry about, you know, Friday. Don't worry about it. But um, he came over on Thursday. That was our first time meetings at, at meeting, as I said before. Basically, uh, he kind of updated me on his way to where I was at, uh, 30 minutes out, 20 minutes out, 10 minutes out. And I asked him to pretty much do that because I needed to use the pre-seed that I showed you guys prior um, before he came. And if you don't remember what pre-seed is, basically um, our bodies as women fight off um, foreign things that are not supposed to be in our body. So um, once sperm would enter my body, basically my body would just begin to do what it does. So it kind of was like, it defeats the purpose of what I'm doing. So the pre-seed helps to um, carry the sperm uh, through to the tubes to do what it does. Uh, so I used that 20 minutes out um, when he came. That was our first time meeting. And it's pretty cool dude, you know, laid back, chill, just as I thought that he actually would be. And um, I gave him the cup, the sterile cup. He went and did what he did, literally took maybe less than 10 minutes. I don't know. And then um, he was on his way. I then did what I did, which was uh, take the syringe um, and um, inserted it, which um, compared to the last donor, he actually produced a lot. Um, so I had a vowel, which the vowels were one mil, um, one and a half vowels. So um, that was a lot and basically what I did was I inserted the first mill and then the half a mill, I ended up using the soft cup. So I rimmed it in the pre-seed, even more pre-seed, and then I just in, um, put the rest of the half a vowel into the um, soft cup and then inserted that. I He came over about nine o'clock p.m. So I inserted it uh, probably about, I don't know, maybe 9, 15, 9, 20-ish. And then um, I ended up keeping it in until uh, the next day. So I ended up taking it out almost um, 9 a.m. the next day, which was Friday morning. So I had kind of um, talked to somebody and they was just like, yeah, you know, um, he probably should come over again the next day because I, I kind of was already feeling like I was ovulating, like meaning I was getting cramps. I could tell my body's ovulating. So, um, you know, we had talked, me and the donor had talked about it before. I was like, hey, you know, just come over on Friday. He'll come in the morning. But this is where you end up running into problems sometime. He ended up having car problems. We were communicating. I hit him up about 12 o'clock and basically said, hey, just let me know, you know, what's what. I'm ready for you, whatever, whatever. Um, we ended up communicating. I fell asleep because it was taking entirely too long and I never inseminated that Friday. So I'm only going off of the one and a half vows. Um, so when you're doing donations, what I did with my donor, I actually paid him up front for two vows. So he owes me one more vowel. 
But I did tell him that if it didn't take this time, then um, I'll see him again next month uh, around the same time. So right now I am eight DPO, which is eight days past ovulation. Um, I'm going to start testing to see if I'm pregnant um, Sunday, which is the 22nd. Then I'm going to do it again on the 24th, which by that time I will be 12 DPO. And then on the 26th, I will be um, 14 DPO which is still kind of early, but for some people, they can tell by 10 DPO whether or not they're pregnant. So, um, and I will be using uh, digital and I will be using strips and I will be using pregnancy store tests. I will also be using first response um, early uh, early tests. Basically, you can, if you're, uh, 10 days you could do 10 dpo in six days before your cycle so my 10 days will overlap my six days before my cycle because my cycle is due on may 26 so of course if i get a cycle on may 26 which is really weird because my cycle has been changing between days so if i get my cycle anywhere between the 25th of may the 26th the 27th then i know that i am not pregnant of course but or I could possibly be because there are people who actually do get pregnant and actually still have a cycle. So I will then get a blood test done uh, sometime in June. Um, however, I in the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead and do the early response um, testing just to make sure that um, or just to see, you know, um, over the course of the days, if I'm pregnant or not to see if anything changes. I will say that since I inseminated, which is, is this foreign to me, I just, I don't like it. Um, I have been feeling cramps. I have gained weight um, for the last four years, I want to say. I have been the same weight, which is 181, um, 183 max literally max for the last four years um especially after me having weight loss surgery um once after i left the 140s and got up to the 180s i have been um the same weight now uh every monday i have been weighing myself and um before the insemination i was still 183 and i weighed myself this past monday and now i am 191. I guess I've been eating, <laughs> I'm gonna assume. I don't know, um, but that's different for me. I actually don't even look like I'm 190 anything. I never even look like I'm 180 anything, but, um, and I weigh myself the same, uh, roughly the same time wearing the same things, nothing but uh, boxers and socks, <laughs> that's it. So, I am um, a little intrigued to see why that is. Um, I haven't had any stress or anything like that. I'm not doing what I did the last time, which was me become a worrisome person, testing every five seconds, running to get a blood test, doing all this extra stuff that had me in high anxiety. I've just kind of let it leave my mind and act like it just never happened. And then when the days come, I'm just gonna go ahead and test. So um, I've just been kind of like conscious to like not intake any alcohol really. Well, actually I haven't had any alcohol since I've inseminated. So just to kind of be mindful of that. Um, but you know, Sunday will be here in no time. I'll blink it and it'll be Sunday. And I probably will do it Sunday night just because I inseminated that Thursday night, but we shall see. Um, anything else I'm thinking of? I'm still taking my vitamins, my prenatal pills, as always. Um, and that's about it. That's the only thing I can think of right now. Uh, I will say that um, as far as donors go, I watched, um, I don't know if you guys uh, have watched uh, um, Netflix. Um, movie or documentary called Our Father. 
I actually watched it and it was very intriguing. Uh, just to give you some background, there was a fertility doctor who um, told parents and single mothers that he was using um, medical student sperm to inseminate them when in all actuality he was actually using his own sperm and in using his own sperm um he ended up producing like 90 something kids and they all pretty much lived in this small town so a lot of them and how they basically found out that they related were related is because one of the kids got kind of curious about who um, her father was or just some like DNA testing and wanted to know if they had any siblings, relatives, whatever, and did the uh, 120, one, I think it's 123 and me. I think it's what it's called, a uh, DNA test. And once it went in there, I guess they expected to see like maybe six like relatives or whatever. And it ended up just, progressively being more and more and more and more so um that is my fear when it came to doing donations um because being in these sperm groups on um facebook there's one guy in particular he has his own like little community and he basically has a shit load of kids when I say a shitload, I mean like probably like 50. And I, I think something is, is truly wrong with that. You know, they say it's only uh, six degrees of separation. So, you know, the chances, and a lot of these people are having babies at the same time. So the chances of your kids possibly running into their sibling and falling in love and all of this and that, it could be a huge possibility. The other donor in which the first donor, I should say, that I actually talked to out of the group, um, he actually has 19 uh, successful donations and kids out of the donations. So I was leery about that, hence why I did not use him, uh, even though he was free. And I decided to use the guy that I have who is African-American because the first donor was not... Um, african-american he was caribbean and german and this donor is african-american and he has two biological kids but he has two and a possibility uh donor kids um he's waiting to find out if the third but he's only donated i am the fourth donation so he's actually you know kind of low-key and um i actually like that about him so yeah, if you ever get a chance to watch that Netflix uh, documentary, check it out because it's very intriguing. Um, very, very intriguing. And it also um, is important to um, find out your donor's medical history. I did ask my donor about himself, his mother, his father, you know, his kids and all of that. Um, because in the documentary, the... Um, doctor wouldn't have even been allowed if he had went through a sperm bank to even donate because he had medical ailments which then um, trickled down to the donor kids and now here they are dealing with these autoimmune diseases that they can't get rid of and have to take medication and have had surgeries so um, that's another thing but if you have any questions feel free to hit me up you can always uh, inbox me send me a message whatever um, if you happen to see this on Yahoo, I mean, um, Yahoo, <laughs> if you happen to see this on YouTube instead of Instagram or my Facebook page, uh, you can follow me on, um, Instagram at five zero shades of Phoenix. So hope everybody's having a good day and y'all take care.